Both the phylum Mollusca and the subphylum of Crustacea are present all over the world. Many of our best known sea creatures fall into one of these two categories. Squids, octopi, snails, and slugs fall under Mollusca, while crabs, shrimp, and lobsters fall under Crustacea. However, both of these groups also have representatives within freshwater environments. In North America alone, there are around 700 extant species of freshwater snails and 300 types of freshwater mussels, with the largest freshwater mollusk diversity found in the waters of the southeastern United States, especially the Savannah and Mobile River. The flowing water in these areas allows them to sustain life in these environments. Crustacea also has a well-known representative present in southeastern water systems, Cambarus bartoni, also known as the freshwater lobster, crawdaddies, mudbugs, or crayfish. These small creatures can be divided into four groups defined by their living habitats, burrowers, river dwellers, stream dwellers, and cave dwellers. This categorization stresses the diversity of their role within multiple freshwater ecosystems. All of these organisms have adapted to living in freshwater environments. Most freshwater mollusks have evolved from marine species originating over 500 million years ago. Many have adaptations to better defend themselves against predators. These mollusks and their snail brethren utilize the preferred defense mechanism of shells. Crayfish, on the other hand, possess exoskeletons, similar to their marine relatives, crabs and shrimp. The different categories of crayfish have adapted specifically to the type of environment they inhabit. The burrowers have large pinchers to help dig in the mud and defend their shelters. The river dwellers and stream dwellers have developed large abdomens to help navigate the currents of the stream and the cave dwellers have larger antennae to help navigate in the dark. Mollusks and crustaceans have found their way in the world and fit into different niches and habitats. A habitat is simply where an organism physically lives, while an ecological niche is the way the organism fits within its habitat and surrounding ecosystem. Freshwater mollusks and crustaceans live in just that, freshwater habitats. These can range from lodic habitats, or flowing water such as rivers and streams, to lintic habitats, or still water such as lakes and ponds. Mollusks tend to live on the bottom of streams where they bury themselves in the sand. Crustaceans can swim through the water or crawl along the bottom of streams and rivers, as seen in crayfish. Mollusks and crustaceans generally occupy the same ecological niche in their habitats, playing similar roles in the environments around them. They are low on the food chain, providing food and energy to various organisms, including ourselves. They are also filter feeders, so they cleanse the water around them of parasites and bacteria. Finally, mollusks can form muscle beds at the bottom of streams, which can create habitats for other organisms. To gain more information about local mollusks and crustaceans, we visited Dr. Brian Helms, the Invertebrae Collections Manager at Auburn University's Museum of Natural History. He showed us the collection of freshwater mollusks and crustaceans in the museum and gave us more information about the work that the museum does. Crayfishes. So crayfishes uh, in Alabama uh, are also highly diverse. There's 97 species uh, in the state, and many of these are recent additions. Uh, in fact, there's been uh, I think two or three uh, species descriptions in the last year or two. Um, it's the highest diversity of anywhere um, in the any geopolitical unit in the world. Um, a lot of these species are pretty dramatic, too. Uh, this is Barbie Cambara simmonsi, the Tennessee bottle brush crayfish. This is a, a, a pretty large animal um, that was, uh, until 2012, unknown to science. Uh, it's probably one of the, if not the largest, one of the largest North American crayfishes uh, that we know about. Uh, finally, uh, crayfishes, they are, um, I guess considered polytrophic omnivores, uh, that they pretty much eat and consume anything they can. Uh, so they're important as uh, predators, as detritivores, as scavengers, uh, as herbivores, so that they pretty much will uh, consume anything. <clears throat> Alabama's freshwater mussels have not fared well with other modern changes to their habitat, including water pollution, sedimentation, and channel dredging. 
Non-indigenous species may also negatively impact freshwater mussels. Of the 180 mussel species so far recorded from Alabama, 22 are extirpated from the state and 27 are believed to be extinct. Freshwater snails are threatened by many human acts. Establishing, establishing dams causes population divisions and forces sediment to resettle on the bottom, literally smothering snails. Dredging or physically removing the bottom of waterways disrupts and destabilizes their environments. Water pollution harms them through poisoning them directly or harming their food sources. Around 60 known species of freshwater snails are already extinct, and many more have become threatened or endangered. I got the opportunity to venture out into the field with Dr. Helms. We're here at South Auburn Fisheries Research Facility. Dr. Helms and his staff are studying the devil crayfish, one of the most widespread species in North America. The devil crayfish construct these chimney-like structures when they burrow, and no one knows why. And that's what we're here to find out. Dr. Helms believes crayfish build the chimneys to create a draft in their burrow in order to provide them with oxygen that they can't find in the water coming from the water table. They need this excess of oxygen to aid in the molting of their shells, which supports Helms' theory, because crayfish only molt a few times a year, and the chimneys only pop up every once in a while. To test this, I got to accompany Helms into the field and find and dig up the crayfish. We first start by finding a fresh chimney, like this one. We then dig down to the water table. Once we have reached that, we will fill the hole with water and plunge it. This creates confusion for the crayfish, and they poke their heads up. Once you see the antenna in the water, you grab them. In just a few hours, we have collected four crayfish. Helms and his team will take them back to the lab and examine if they are in their molting stages like they predicted. Although the devil crayfish isn't in any particular ecological danger of becoming extinct, there are some species of crayfish that are. In Alabama, the endangered level of an animal is measured on a scale from P5, in the least danger, to P1, in the most danger. And of the 97 species of crayfish in Alabama, about half can be classified as P1 or P2 and researchers are trying to get federal funding to help aid in conservation. We've now taken a look at the unique features, roles, and conservation efforts surrounding our main three freshwater representatives, mussels, snails, and crayfish. Recently, different population and genetic studies have taken place involving the phyla of mollusks and crustaceans. Currently here at Auburn, researchers in the Museum of Natural History have recently discovered a species of cobalt-colored crayfish in southern Alabama. This effort has been led by Dr. Helms himself. Though these organisms are small, freshwater mollusks and crustaceans play important roles within freshwater communities. Each organism has its place within freshwater ecology that affects other environments, whether they are freshwater environments, terrestrial, or marine. This is why it is crucial that we care about the conservation of these organisms. They do not just affect their own freshwater ecosystems, but the world that we live in as a whole.